on international it's indeed a pleasure to be here with all of you the campaign theme of our international women's day 2022 is the bias our brains are hardwired to make judgments of things we encounter in order to make sense of the complicated world around us. Long-standing prejudices still dominate our society. Substantial barriers have been caused by gender discriminations. The leaders and the decision makers see part of the picture instead of the total landscape. Gender-based violence, violence is a phenomenon deeply rooted in gender inequality harmful social norms that sustain gender-based violence include protecting family owner over women's safety and men's authority to discipline women and children. Inequalities arising from class, religion, location are further complicated by gender bias that holds back the progress. These inequalities are manifested to cause the life cycle. Implicit bias refers to attitudes or stereotypes that affect our understanding, actions, and decision in an unconscious way. Unconscious bias can have a big impact on people-related decisions at work. Fair pay and income equality should also be the new priority. A sustainable future remains beyond our rich without gender equality. The best way to reduce utilization of people on the system. The year 2022 is pivotal for achieving gender equality in the context of climate change, environmental and disaster risk reduction. We can all do our part to help make gender equality a reality. Today we are very excited to have some absolutely amazing speakers with us to share their thoughts and experiences on women's empowerment, climate change, and sustainable tomorrow. It's really great to get individualized feedback. Our speakers from diverse backgrounds are fantastic people to listen to. Um, it, you may kindly use the chat box to submit your questions, if any, to our valued speakers of today's events. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to request my dear colleague, Humaira, to kindly introduce our respected speakers. Welcome, Humaira. Thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Kausar Praveen, for giving me the floor. Hello, everyone. Except warm greetings on behalf of Pragati Jatri, ADW Programs, Spelman College, and Harun Sriti Pat Chakro. Hope you are all doing well. Uh, welcome to the today's event on women's empowerment and climate change and sustainable tomorrow. I'm Humaira Shaupat, and it's a great pleasure for me to be the co-host of today's event. Now, I would like to Welcome our today's guests. Sumaya Shetu, student leader joining from Bangladesh. Dipshita Dhar, student leader joining from Waste Bengal. Dr. Pushpa Parekh, professor of English at Spelman College, and she is joining from USA. Farha Mahmoud Trina, vice chairman ECAP from Bangladesh, Modester Yukai Kamupinda, business consultant and publicist from Zimbabwe, Dr. Shampa Shan, professor, writer, and theater personality from India, Sujita Dhakal, assistant program officer, Rikopchak Nepal country program from Nepal. We have also some wonderful singers with us as well from indigenous community from Chittagong Hill Tracks, Bangladesh. I would like to welcome Junaki Chakma, Ratri Tripura, and Jacqueline Tonchonga. We are really very honored to have these wonderful ladies with us in today's event. Now, 
we are going to start our today's event by a lovely song. I would like to request Junaki Chakma for a song. Junaki Chakma. Ratri is there, so, so she will. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Um, okay, I would like to request Ratri Tripura. Ratri Tripura to sing a song. Hello, Ratri Tripura. Can you hear me? She has connection problem, network problem. So she, I can't see her here. I think we can start with Sumaya Shatu. Okay. Um, let's start our discussion part. I would like to introduce our today's guest, Sumaya Shetu, student leader, organizing secretary, Central Committee, Bangladesh Students Union. I would like to request Sumaya Shetu for her. Thank you. Are you hearing me? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Thank you. Women's Empowerment, Climate Change, Sustainable Tomorrow. Revolutionary greetings from Bangladesh Students Union. Today's seminar is on a very relevant issue of the present time. Thanks for inviting me. We already know that the world continues to battle and try to recover from the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic situation. At the same time, we are affected by another global crisis that is climate change and the impact it has no omen, health, rights, empowerment, equality, climate change is a multiple of pre existing form of vulnerable and inequalities including gender inequalities, often resulting in negative impacts for women and girls. If we sincerely look at a glance, we clearly see that gender-based violence and harmful practices, including child marriage and female genital mutation, increasing among climate-affected population. And women empowerment is being hampered by the advice conditions of climate change. If we analyze the context of our country a little, we will see that even though we are considered as a developing country, the people of this country are actually poor. A lot of people have a lot of money and most of them live in no way. And Bangladesh lies far behind the terms of women's empowerment. Various types of natural disasters occur in this country of which women are the most affected. The women of the village who try to support themselves by keeping different animal and birds have to lose everything in various natural climates. We do not see any desire due to natural disaster. In the process, women's employment is severely affected. There is a coronal harm to women human, human health. The most important thing is that the who run the country and different to our domain. This is why the rape another is operation happen. But we see a culture of injustice. In order to ensure a better and more sustainable future for all, we must take action for an empowering woman. For this, we need to ensure equality to every sector of professional life. Not only that, we need to encourage a relevantly backward population who is not interested to stay to join any job. I think when women will income, income be safe, sufficient, then they can fight against all kinds of injustice. No, not only that, the government should have to applicate women for their economic contribution 
and need to take action how to in, engage more and more female for every sector in our country the government should need to take action for ensuring women education compulsory in order to build a beautiful society keeping women trapped in the middle of the house the dreams for that desired society will not be realized in any way so we must first ensure the empowerment of women in society and at the same time play a greater role in the justice system violence against women must be stopped and justice must be done quickly if you do not ensure the empowerment of women our desired liberation will never come so for women in immunity women's empowerment is very important thanks to all i am so sorry i can't go my home or a secure place to talk about this matter because uh, today we have a program today is 13 march uh, it's called raju divas so i am so sorry uh, and thanks to all uh, thanks again to uh, the, uh, thank you so much on behalf of my organization bangladesh student union thank you thank you so much smaya shudu for being with us for your precious time uh thanks to you and the bangladesh chapter union as well uh now i would like to request ratri tripura ratri tripura maybe you can hear me ratri tripura i would like to request to to sing a song hello yeah we can hear you hello yeah we can hear you ratri tripura hello namaskar i am ratri tripura
Thank you so much, Rakhi Tripura, for such an amazing song. Uh, now, in this, okay, thank you so much. Now, in this session, I would like to introduce our next guest, Dr. Pushpa Parekh, Professor of English and Director of African Diaspora and the World at Spelman College, has taught and published in the areas of British post colonial and U.S. immigrant literatures. Welcome, Pushpa Pare. Let's welcome Thank Pushpa Pare. I would like to hand over the floor to Dr. Pushpa Pare. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Is there an echo? I'm going to leave my other uh, my iPhone because somehow I had I can hear only through my Spalman iPhone um, that I have, and so I just got out of it. Uh, sorry, thank you very much for uh, the introduction, and I just want to um, start off with a, a, a quote um, because I like to teach about transnational women's um, empowerment. Uh, I've uh, taught for a long time post-colonial as a um, movement away from um, nationalistic sentiments, although I know that nationalism is needed at certain times, there is also a time when we need to reconnect with other um, minority groups, especially in the US, because sometimes there is a tendency to work in silos. So I integrate uh, what I call transnational feminism. And I just want to uh, quote from uh, a Tao uh, or Dao uh, saying, which is very powerful and speaks to me. And it says, knowing others is intelligence. Knowing yourself is true wisdom. Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. If you realize that you have enough, you are truly rich. So with that quote, I want to begin because there is, um, I see a lot of uh, problems related to uh, corporate greed or whatever you want to say. There is you know, personal greed or, you know, for, for empowerment and um, advancement against others. And that is not in my sense. And I, I want to say transnational feminist sense, um, true advancement or progress. So I just want to use that quote to get started with the topic for today, which is women's empowerment, climate change and sustainable tomorrow. And I just want to point out that our, our work at Spelman College, which is historically black women's college at, in Atlanta. And I want to integrate uh, the various ways in which I see empowerment uh, as uh, our mission and goal at Spelman, but also as I see in my teaching, in my scholarship, and my administration work. Um, so as I, uh, as I was introduced, I am a professor in the English department, but I also direct the African Diaspora and the World Program at Spelman College, the ADW program as we like to call it, is an interdisciplinary first year program that all students are required to take. And it replaced what used to be called uh, the, um, you know, uh, requirement in um, uh, world literature and world civilization courses. So it's really one of the required courses that students take in order to understand their own history, but also to understand their identity intersections with the world. Um, so I just want to say that Spelman College is a private liberal arts college. 
And I already told you that it is a historically black institution for women. It's also considered a global leader in the education of women of African descent and is a member of the Atlanta University Center Consortium in Atlanta, uh, Georgia in the US. Uh, its mission has been to dedicate academic excellence in intellectual creative attribute development of her students. Uh, and I've been a part of Spelman since 1990. So I really appreciate being part of this uh, endeavor to really transform the lives of our students, but also the lives of women around the world for the better. And Spelman student body consists of 2,100 students. And this is data that I collected from 2018. It may have changed over the years, uh, but it's still around that. Uh, our students come from 41 states and 15 foreign countries. Of the total student population, we 67% received some form of federal loans, 16% are first generation college students, and 87% are African American. Um, with that introduction, I want to say that uh, you know we have been keeping up excellent. Um, academic um, uh, standards, but uh, I've been working in the area of teaching research and program administration uh, for a number of years. And I want to share with you what I do uh, in order to advance women's empowerment and sustainability topics uh, that are uh, recently also dealing with climate change issues. Um, so in my teaching and research, I examine and have my students explore narratives of post-colonial global South uh, women's literature. I also refer as we used to um, non-Western um, women's issues. And I emphasize all these um, labels are somehow uh, not fully inclusive of all the women that I'm really interested in exploring and, and relating to especially through their uh, writings. I uh, also include domestic and international migrant and diaspora contexts. And I have my students study women's identities in transnational contexts, but especially in African and South Asian literary texts. Um, this has been my focus for the last several years, but as I mentioned before, I'm also administering the ADW program. And in that program, we prepare students to develop a perception of themselves as citizens of a changing and increasingly compressed world. Uh, and we also want to sharpen their awareness of diverse cultural and historical experiences and promote the association between learning and social change. Um, we offer gender-informed interdisciplinary study of the histories and cultures of Africa and its diasporas and its connections to the world movements for liberation struggles, for example. Uh, we also include women's um, movements uh, around the world uh, and now uh, specifically focused on environmental racism and uh, climate change. We emphasize the intersection and connections among various communities um, of African descent globally. I uh, also want to say that um, we have um, a history, of course, in every academic uh, space. There are uh, contestations. And uh, so in that context, I want to say that ADW program had its revolutionary origins because it was not embraced by everybody right away. Uh, some saw it and uh, we tried to re-educate people. They saw it as male bashing or Christianity bashing. And we tried to clearly center the African diaspora knowledge, perspectives, experiences um, on uh, you know, researched uh, kind of um, information rather than just opinions. 
Uh, we engage Black women with African American histories, cultures, and texts in the courses. We decolonize Eurocentric systems, including slavery, colonialism, white supremacy, patriarchy, and imperialism, as well as study what resistance movements have been about around the world. And thus, we try to inculcate knowledge of and respect for and pride in Black history and identity and interrogate race, gender, sexuality, class, and nationality, cultural and religious hegemony, capitalism, Marxism, and other structures, concepts, intellectual debates, and textual productions. Um, this has been our focus. Uh, for several years, we revisit our curriculum annually as uh, this was developed by uh, our ADW faculty, and we continue to um, make sure that we are uh, going along with the times and we are not stuck in the past. It's about 27 years that we have completed. Uh, we celebrated the uh, 25th year of our uh, program uh, by actually bringing out a, a book that I'm very proud of. Uh, it's actually a special issue and I wanted to share with you. It's um, called uh, Frontiers and Frameworks in African Diaspora Teaching and Scholarship. Came out in 2020 as a special issue of Journal of Global Postcolonial Studies. And I edited it with, and my faculty contributed to this um, wonderful um, publication. We are academics and we work in our field, but we also integrate in our courses what is um, considered to be uh, uh, service learning. I think in some places they call it um, hands-on experience uh, kind of uh, curriculum. And we want our students to go out into the, the surroundings in their neighborhoods and engage uh, and see <coughs> that there is reciprocity in service. And it's not a one-way kind of you know, engagement. So those are some of the points that I wanted to bring to your attention with regard to my engagement with women's empowerment globally. So thank you very much. Thank you, Pushpa Parikh. Thank you, Dr. Pushpa Parikh, for such an amazing session. Uh, in this session, I would like to request Farham Mahmoud-Trina. She is Vice, Vice Chairman, Investment Committee of ECAP and from Bangladesh. I would like to request Farham Mahmoud-Trina to deliver her speech. Okay, thank you. Uh... Thank you, Humaira Shopat. Uh, nice to introduce uh, me. I'm Farhan Mahmoud Srina, Vice Chairman Investment Committee, <laughs> Commerce Association of Bangladesh, ECAP. So, where we all uh, try and work for uh, making the entrepreneur more strong and more creative and more innovative and in, uh, connecting the government and private sector as well. Um, I'm also an educator of Australian International School and the uh, convener of Internet Governance Forum. And I have a fashion house called Trinas Closet. So all together, I'm a woman. That is my most powerful word. And a proud mother of my special needs child. So these are the things what we, uh, what I always used to say that nothing is impossible for a woman. Uh, if she wants, she can break the barrier. As a special need child's mom, I used to work so many areas uh, so that my son gets the inspiration of working hard. And he used to study in regular school where I did not keep, keep him any in any special need school. Uh, so he's a golfer and he can play tabla very well. So that is all I can say about woman empowerment. Now, woman empowerment means for me to improve our woman's social, economic, and you know, personal development. It also comes 
Uh, it also uh, it should be uh, for improvement the standards of life of our women uh, in rural and as well as the metro areas. What I, why I am saying this, um, we are working for, uh, with the rural entrepreneurs. They used to sell their different kinds of rural things so that we can connect the government side, the uh, public sector and tie up the uh, private sector as well. So this is also we are doing from our side, from ECAB and it also helps uh, Reducing domestic violence and gender inequality. You know, this is the theme of uh, Women's Day 2022. Break the bias is mm -hmm. also uh, very important for uh, uh, improve, uh, for proving women empowerment. So, women are strong from the very beginning. If it's just the way the world should perceive their strength, that's it. That is all. Women empowerment. Thank you so very much and lovely talking in front of this such wonderful panelist. Thank you very much. Thank you, Farha Trina, for your speech. Thank you so much. Uh, in this session, I would like to request again to Ratri Tripura to sing a song. We can hear you.
Thank you so much to Rakshi Tripura for this amazing song. Um, I'm extremely sorry. Actually, we are extremely very sorry as two, our two guests are in prison here today with us for their personal problem. Dipshita Thor and Modesta Yukai, they are in prison here. So I would like to move on to the next speaker. Uh, Dr. Shampa Shen. She is graduated from Presidency College with a gold medal, and she did her postgraduate and also got a gold medal from Jadavpur University. Did her PhD in Bengali literature, fellow of Asiatic Society. She was invited to deliver lectures at select universities like Warsh University, Poland, Charles University, Czechoslovakia, St. Louis University, Spain, Humboldt University, Germany, she has been an actress for 25 years of Presenium Theatre. She has performed on various stages program in Germany, been invited by the German state, did acting as a cultural ambassador in Pakistan. For her amazing contributions in theatre, she has received Bharat Nirman Award, Piki's Contribution and Indian Theatre Award as well. Let's welcome Dr. Shompa Shen. I would like to hand over the floor to Dr. Shompa Shen. You are mute, sorry, Dr. Shompa Shen. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible now. Thank you so much. Thank you for this introduction. Uh, welcome everybody. I just want to share some facts, data, and uh, some facts from history in front of uh, such a prestigious panel. Actually, it is an absolute honor to deliver few words on women empowerment, climate change, and sustainable tomorrow being invited by Prakuti Jatri, Spelman College, and Harun Patuchakro. And thanks to Utpalda also. We, the women, as Simone de Beauvoir said, the second sex of this universal society, the irresistible force of mother nature are still fighting to get most elusive world gender equality in terms of every sector in life. Basically the word feminism depicts an ongoing process of liberation, rights and equality for women. There is a thin line of difference between gender equality and feminism. It's the vast discourse of thoughts, dialogue, history of movement. There is no scope to be revealed it here within a few minutes. I'd like to mention some points here from the Indian perspective. As we know, the earliest celebration of International Women's Day was a socialist political event, which was held in 1909 
by Socialist Party of America, although the thoughts of liberation of women had its genesis on the 19th century for all over the world. In Europe, feminist consciousness began spreading during and after French Revolution. Uh, and by the end of the century, women's voice, their ideas, political campaigns, women's suffrage, right for vote and equal pay, right for property and demand for gender equality being expressed and had generated so many webs of feminist movements in Western world. Women's positions in society became a debated topic during 19th century in Europe and United States for liberal feminists. On the discourse of the history of ideas on women, we have seen so many sections such as uh, liberal feminism, socialist feminism, radical uh, feminism or Marxist or cultural feminism, lesbian sex feminism, etc. Setting aside all paradigms, we can put emphasis on the history of celebration of International Women's Day, which was absolutely a socialist political event. Therefore, after Bolshevik Revolution, Soviet Union was declared 8th March as International Women's Day in 1917. And we know United Nations celebrated its first International Women's Day in 1975 even has observed this day on the theme of break the bias and the slogan of UN is gender equality, climate change and sustainable tomorrow in this year. Therefore, we can feel the dreadful scenario of gender inequality as horrific as changing climate. Now, I would like to cast a look on our Indian perspective. The 19th century was an era of Indian social reform movements under the colonial British rule. As an Indian bourgeois society developed under colonial rule, this class sought to reform itself, initiating campaigns against child marriage, horrific system of sati, for the deprivation of women from their right to property. Without the contribution of Raja Rammohan Rai or Isha Chandra Bidashagar, we cannot think the word liberation or equality for Indian women. The pre-independence period of India saw a symbolic use of mother image as a rallying device from feminist assertion of women's power as mothers of the nation to the Gandhian lauding of the spirit of endurance and suffering embodied in the mother. But what is the actual reality of our country despite all embodiment of mother image? National Crime Record Bureau, NCRB actually, their report says that crime against women has increased 63% in 2021 at only Delhi. And as we know, rape, gang rape, heinous crimes against, against women, murder, abduction, and dowry death, molestation, kidnapping, or percentage of domestic violence against women has increased day by day. According to the 2019 NCRB report, 32,033 rape cases were registered in police files in India. We know in 2012, the heinous crime against Nirvaya literally shook the nation and the structure of power also in our country. Therefore, in post-independence India, the contemporary feminist movement began by basing itself firmly on principles of equality and asserting that gender-based structures such as the sexual division of labor oppressed and subordinated women. 
the cry of vulnerability and helplessness of women brought a new subjectivity into Indian feminist movement, expressing emotions through cultural protest. Environmental conservations movement or other campaigns. For instance, I just want to uh, mention some instance from cultural protest, particularly from theater, as uh, am I, am I uh, working in theater since 25 years. Uh, so that theater is, a, I, I know, you know, theater is a great weapon for poor protest. A broad platform, the Haj Birodhi Chetuna Manch was formed in 1989, including a diverse range of women's groups cutting across political and femini feminist lines. Their play, Om Swaha, had steered Indian society against terrible dowry system and deaths at the time. So many drama troops in India had played significant role to raise their voice for women. Enormous dowry deaths is happening in India, you know, and the straight strength of women through the Ajit Prof or proscenium type theater production we have shown day by day. I can remember our theater martyr, Sabdar Hasmi's name. Sabdar Hasmi's play Aurat is a very important drama in this context. In modern Indian theater, multiple dramatists has repeatedly used archetype of mother in connection with classical or mythological or epical context. They used archetype of mother from Mahabharata or Ramayana. Not only through the language of culture, strength of women's movement had shown courage and power in agitation against alcohol and distribution of liquor, especially tribal and hill area. In Jharkhand, Uttarakhand, Garhwal, Kumayun, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, the agitation of women against liquor was a phenomenon. In fact, tribal women were unthinkably oppressed and sexually harassed by the upper class Hindus in pre-independence era of our country. For instance, I'd like to mention the horrific breast tax, which was a hate tax imposed on lower caste communities by the kingdom of Travancore, which is Kerala at present. The Dalit or the lower caste women had no right to cover up their breasts. The breast tax was imposed if they covered their breast in front of any society or people. And uh, there is a folklore about an Izaba class woman, a Dalit class woman, Nageli, who lived in village Cherthala in 19th century early 19th century as a protest against this horrific breast tax, Nagali had cut off her breasts and died soon on the pool of love blood. But her protest could compel to abolish breast tax in 1924. This is the history of our women movement. I'd like to mention the role and struggle of women in India for a safe environment also. But uh, going to that context, I'm just uh, putting a note here. As an actor of Spandan Theatre Group, we have produced recently our proscenium play, Rape Particle. The name of the play is Rape Particle. This documentary theater has strongly carried a message against sexual violence and rape. 
And I would like to mention the name of the very strong play, powerful play, Draupadi, which was acted by Heisnam Sabitri from Manipur. Her theater became a weapon of protest against Asfa law, Asfa act, when her bare body, naked body was used as a symbol of protest on stage. That was a magic that was created magic in front of audience. Now I say the role and struggle of women in India for a safe environment. Probably no other group is more affected by environmental destruction than poor village women. The struggle for a safe and sane environment, our women had played commendable role by their protest in Chipko and Apico movement. The Chipko movement grew and developed for a safe environment in Uttarakhand in 1970s. The idea of hugging trees and saving forests had set a different idiom of protest in women-led movement. Today, I'll conclude my lecture by a lullaby sang by Gaura Devi, a 50 years old widow who has struggled in Chipko movement. The song was, this forest is our mother's home. We will protest it with all our might. This forest is our mother's home. We will protest it with all our might. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Dr. Shampasan, for your amazing lecture. We are really very grateful to you. And thank you so much for your precious time as well. Um, in this session, I would like to introduce our next guest, and this is Sujita Thakal, Forestry and GESI Practitioner, Assistant Program Officer, Recovtech Nepal Country Program from Nepal. I would like to hand over the floor to Sujita Thakal. Uh, thank you very much, Humaira. Now, uh, I'd like to start uh, once again. Namaste, everyone. I'm Sujita, a forestry and uh, gender equality and socially inclusive practitioner from Nepal. I'm currently working for Recoft Nepal Country Program. Also, I'm core member of Female Foresters Network Nepal, which mostly works on uh, women agency, leadership development and networking, uh, which advocates for safe and dignified working space across forestry sector of Nepal, which recognizes gender as a core business of the forestry sector and also enhances more uh, collaboration and creation of more male allies. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank organizers uh, for inviting me to this very powerful event uh, as continuation of International Women's Day celebration. I, I really feel honored to share the panels with such prestigious, strong and intellectual women out there. I really feel very honored. Uh, Climate change and uh, gender equality are uh, closely linked, I must say. And uh, together, one, uh, it forms one of the most pressing challenges of our time. Uh, gender equality is a fundamental human right and a foundation for peaceful, prosperous, and sustainable societies that we have uh, imagined. Sadly, there is a long way to go to achieve gender equality and global advances in gender equality and women's empowerment uh, for the current scenario at best are very fragile. Uh, we, as we all know, according to a recent UN Women report, uh, COVID-19 has exposed to a significant uh, gender gaps in women's and girls' rights, including increased violence, poverty, lack of access to sexual and reproductive health care. Pandemic has really revealed the systematic discriminations and inequalities in a new light uh, in all of the uh, parts of the world. So, as uh, climate change is a multiplier of pre existing forms of vulnerabilities and inequalities, including 
gender inequalities. It often uh, results into negative impacts, mostly for women and girls. IPCC also has discussed the differential impact of climate change on men and women. Uh, in the first hand, we might think that uh, climate change impacts are same for all, but the physical, psychological, social, and economic impacts uh, men and women experience uh, within the emergency responses are really very, very different. We all know that uh, Asia and Pacific is one of the most disaster prone regions in the world, and Nepal is also one of them, making Nepal also a hotspot of climate change and climate change induced disasters as well. Uh, we cannot ignore the dis uh, uh, disproportionate effects of climate change on women and girls, although natural disasters, including crime uh, related extreme weather events, uh, create a tough time and hardships for everyone. On average, they kill more women than men. They kill more women at younger age than men. And especially in countries like Nepal, the effect is very harsh um, on the certain gender of women where they have low social, economic and political status. Nepal and in other worlds also, women constitute the majority of the world's poor and more uh, poor group and also more dependent on natural resources which are threatened by climate change. This dynamics has implications in their livelihoods, well-being and which will challenge their goal uh, the more resilient future for them. So as a forestry and gender equality practitioner in Nepal, uh, I have been working in different innovative pro, uh, projects that tends to empower women economically and socially to promote sustainability, like uh, in coordination of local government, we provide uh, wastelands to the landless poor and socially disadvantaged uh, women groups so that they can do sustainable agriculture uh, practices there, which uh, in turn uh, empowers them economically. So, we are also trying to reform the system with gender strategies at local level, uh, which helps in gender responsive planning, gender responsive uh, budgeting in the local level, gender responsive forest management, also creating gender leaders within different forestry institutes and workspace uh, and use of media among them. Empowering women and girls to have a voice to be equal players in the decision making related to climate change and sustainability is essential for sustainable development and greater gender equality in my perspective. So what I think is we need to acknowledge the contribution of women and girls all around the world must recognize and promote their meaningful participation uh, who are leading the charge on climate change adaptation, mitigation and response so that we can build a healthier, a just, and more sustainable future for all. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sujita Thakal, for your lecture. Um, we have come to the very last stage of our today's event, though I want to ask if uh, Kwame Kalimara, can you hear me? If you want to share your views in front of us. Uh, I, just I just asked Kwame to contribute because um, Odester is not here. If you can say a few words about your involvement with communities and activism. Okay, thank you very much. Um, please forgive me for not necessarily showing my screen. I didn't uh, expect uh, this invitation, but what I would do want to say is that I'm pleased to be able to uh, observe this program. Most thankful to hear the uh, presentations, and I do think it is vital for us to uh, as Dr. Peretta said, uh, for us to be able to not um, 
uh, fix ourselves in silos. Because when I think of uh, patriarchy, capitalism, and uh, imperialism, and all of the other um, uh, oppressions and exploitations, unless we um, create a very clear united front to defeat these evils, um, uh, the uh, evil seed will continue to uh, germinate and grow. And so we have to be very vigilant. I think we have to be very um, strategic and tactical in terms of how we uh, tackle this, uh, this, this monster, because this monster is uh, claiming the lives and the spirits of uh, women, children, and men. And we have to find uh, the common ground. We have to find uh, and understand uh, who and what and where our common enemy is, is coming from. Um, I have a vision of a world where we all are respectful of the dignity and being of all human beings, but also of our planet. And we also have to understand that uh, we have the symbiotic relationship with our planet. So we have a responsibility to understand the inclusiveness of how we need to address our lens in terms of how we view the, uh, the world. And so we have to create uh, strong uh, allies, strong uh, allegiances, and we have to find ways to uh, get into the uh, lives of larger community, but also smaller community. As we look at smaller community, we have to recognize that uh, that change and that the necessity for recognizing human rights and, and, and self-determination is vital. And we recognize that right now we're in a very uh, weird uh, uh place right now with the threat of maybe uh, global um, nuclear uh, warfare. And I don't think we need to uh, be ignorant about it. We need to, to look at it. And it means that we have to really, in some respects, we have to find ways, uh, even though we might have a uh, you know, strategic objectives in terms of looking at, at, the, at the prize, we have to recognize that it means we have to engage ourselves in all levels of government, uh, both local, national, and international, if we are to be successful in creating a better world. So I'm hoping that that gives a little bit of a piece of my reflection. We, we have to be activists. And one of the things that I, what I enjoy about the uh, 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 African Diaspora in the World program is that it does lay out, as Dr. Perret had indicated, it lays out uh, vehicles for uh, women to really understand uh, globally and locally the oppressions that uh, uh, they experience, but it gives them examples of how women globally have found agency. And in and, and the fact that we're looking at various methods, as I share with my students, um, it gives us a, a view in terms of, of what we can do. So in other words, you don't have to necessarily go to jail or to, to be a martyr. As long as your voice is being heard, then we have a chance to create that, that uh, brighter future for uh, all of humanity. So I hope that that is an acceptable comment. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you so much, Kwame. Um, I would like to give a short description about uh, Kwame. And Kwame is ADW professor, and he is also part of ILCC committee and is an active and is active is an active community activ activism. Thank you so much, Kwame, for your amazing lecture. And now we have our guest, Modesto Yukai us. So I would like to give a short description about, about Modesto Yukai. Uh, he, 
is that is a Zimbabwean business consultant and publicist. She read for BA in international studies at Spelman College and attained certificates in political science at LSU, UCSD, and international relations at the School of International Training in Geneva. Passionate about environmental justice, she works with small businesses, organizations, and female political aspirants manifesting climate action in her home country. I would like to welcome Modesta Yukai. I'd like to hand over the floor to Modesta. Thank you. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. I'm so pleased and honored to join such a powerful discussion um, here from here from Harare. I'm based in Harare, Zimbabwe, where it is my hometown where I'm currently working. So it's a pleasure to join other women, especially from uh, the global south, as they would call it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Modesto Yukai. Um, we have come to the very last stage of our today's session. I would like to request Ratu Tripura again to sing a song. She can continue her. Uh, she can continue her uh, speech, Modesto. Ask her to continue. Okay. Modesto, we can hear you. All right, great. Uh, thank you so much. So just in brief, I'd like to introduce uh, what I've been doing. So I returned to my home country, Zimbabwe, in 2017, which is about uh, four years ago. And it was really a time of a lot of political uh, changes in the political space. As you know, um, that is the time where uh, the 90-year-old President Robert Mugabe was uh, removed from power. And the reason why um, someone would ask what this has to do with climate change or climate policy is that whenever we talk about policy or change or community change, it also has to do about the leadership of a country and what the political trajectory looks like. So um, right now we are also heading into elections and some of my clients, uh, as I work, work with brands, individuals and companies that are beginning to mainstream uh, climate action, whether in their um, business processes, in the services that they're giving, whether it comes to um, uh, products that they're making, the more sustainable products, and just reducing their carbon blueprint or um, like using alternative source of energy rather than um, uh, cutting down trees for cooking or for, for power. So um, that's what I've been doing. And this time in Zimbabwe, it's around, um, we're heading into elections in 2023. So there's a lot of, um, uh, political campaigning going on. And in research, research actually says that um, female politicians or female legislators are actually more concerned about policies that improve uh, the state of the climate, the state of the environment. So I have been trying to just uh, work with a lot of female politicians in drafting their strategy so that they have strategy which is presenting their plans or ideas about how they are going to fight uh, climate change within their communities or find ways and methods um, uh, through projects to mitigate and adapt to climate change within their communities. And in Zimbabwe, our main challenge is drought. So we've been working with female politicians so that uh, as they are campaigning, as they are meeting sponsors, they are presenting projects that are going to, to introduce um, ways of farming, 
um, crops um, or just into our culture methods that are uh, like drought resistant crops or methods of, of, of farming that won't require a lot of use of a lot of water or ways of saving water, drilling boreholes, and also uh, preserving wetlands. So yes, um, that's all I can say right now. I just want to stay with us for your speech. Thank you for your precious time. Uh, I would like to request Farhad Trina. She, uh, I think she wanted to say something. I'd like to hand over the floor to Farhad Trina. Uh, sorry, sorry, I, I just I just unmute myself. Sorry for that. Uh, sorry for taking a bit more because of uh, I just wanted to share my thought as um, a teacher as well as an IB practitioner. We used to teach our students uh, the student agency where the diagram is designed as choice, voice, and ownership. So in woman empowerment, we should have the woman agency where we should have the choice to show our passion, our dedication, our compassion to work hard and voice to have our own right and the ownership which we, we can break by which we can break the bias of gender inequality to have a very good sustainable tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for Thank you so much. Um, in this session, I would like to request to Junaki Chakma. Junaki Chakma, can you hear me? I would like to request Junaki Chakma to sing a song as, as we have come to the very last stage of our today's event. Yeah, Junaki Chakma, hope you can hear me. You are muted. Can you please, will you please unmute yourself, Jonaki Chakma? Please kindly unmute yourself, Jonaki Chakma. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you now. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> okay, uh, I start uh, my travel song. <clears throat> Putun figi migi migi migulu de batole mo fora nanje do mage tara loge loge putun figi migi migi migulu de batole mo fora nanje do mage tara loge loge putun figi migi migi Sidu hiti na na ne figi, puri uri gita to. Sigi di di moon budi ne pul pudi sa to. Sidu hiti na na ne figi, puri uri gita to. Sigi di di moon budi ne pul pudi sa to. Gidum selegi no farum tada doge doge. Gidum selegi no farum tada doge doge. Mo for an ange do mage tada doge doge. Utuni figi migi migi. He de sori moroi moroi. Gazo vaso tarum bo. Sal fili do kin guri sa de la de go. I de sor muro i muro i gaso vaso tarum bo. Sal fili do kin guri sa de la de go. Jarot sumi gamone gai gai guri berele. 
ঝাড়ক সুমি গামনে গাই গাই গুড়ি বেড়ে ম মগে হারা লগে লগে উত্তন ফিগে মিগে মিগে উত্তন ফিগে মিগে মিগে উত্তন ফিগে মিগে মিগে Thank you so much, Janaki Chakma. I would like to say uh, that, that uh, this was a Chakma song. So I would like to request once again to Janaki Chakma to sing a song. Okay. Will you please one more song for us? <clears throat> গসরে বানি রি উড়ি গুড়ি ফিরি গিরি রেঙ্গি রেঙ্গি গিরি বানাবে রে দোবার গি পে গদে Janaki Chakma for your amazing songs. So though, though I don't understand Chakma language, but I enjoyed the songs very, very much. And music has no barrier actually. There is yeah, no yeah. language yeah. barrier, I think so. I, we the really enjoyed it. I know the first song because of I used to stay in Rangamati and that's why. Oh. And I, I was singing together, <laughs> though I'm, I was muted. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, I would like to hand over the floor to Kwame, Mr. Kwame, as he has raised his hand. Mr. Kwame, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Um, I'm also thankful for the beautiful music that has been shared 
uh, with us today, and I'm thoroughly enjoying the uh, the program. But uh, when uh, our sister from Zimbabwe spoke, I thought that it would be important to add something else, at least in terms of my remarks, and that is, it's important for us not to romanticize uh, leaders and we must hold our leaders accountable and understand that our activism does have consequences. But I would like to uplift, uh, since we're talking about climate change and sustainability, I'd like to uplift the um, uh, Kenyan ancestor, Wangari Mathai and her work. And that's uh, someone whom we actually study in our African diaspora and the world uh, uh, curriculum. And uh, as I can see, Dr. Brett has just shown the picture of her, but I would also like to share, particularly with uh, our, our sister from Zimbabwe, um, some, some, some information that uh, she may or may not be aware of, but I thought about it, um, particularly given uh, the political leadership in Zimbabwe. Horace Campbell, who is from uh, Jamaica, did, I thought, an excellent work uh, it's probably maybe 15 years ago, but the title of the, the book is, is very informative. It's called Reclaiming Zimbabwe, the Exhaustion of the Patriarchal Model of Liberation. And what uh, uh, Horace Campbell does in that book is, is really talks about the uh, Im impediments of, of uh, uh, idolizing, romanticizing a uh, leader who led the battle from the change of power from Rhodesia to Zimbabwe. And we do know that, uh, unfortunately, Mugabe has, has uh, um, not benefited the masses at all. And all I'm really trying to say is that it requires us to really study and really uh, critique leadership so that we can uh, share with uh, both in the academy and outside of Kima uh, uh, the academy, the type of leadership, collective leadership that is necessary to make a better society. So that's what I wanted just sort of to add. We've, we've, we really have a, a lot of work to do. And I'm just, uh, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but it's important for us, for us to continue to um, pass on uh, these gems and these resources. And I know that uh, uh, since I've been here, I've already uh, shifted and went over to uh, Facebook Live so I have the link so I can share uh, uh, this panel with some of the people whom I work with. Thank you for allowing me this to, to share. That is great, thank you for sharing. Thank you so much, Kwame, Mr. Kwame for sharing your views. Uh, in this session, I would like to call Ratri Tripura. Can you hear me, Ratri Tripura? Uh, Ratri Tripura, can you hear me? Rafi Kipura, we can't hear you. Can you hear me? Hello. Song. She is maybe she's facing some technical issue. Uh, okay. 
maybe she is facing some technical issues. Uh, okay, I would like to, now I would like to hand over the floor to Morshidul Hakim Shubro. Uh, I would like to request Morshidul Hakim Shubro to deliver a few words on behalf of Harun Sriti Pat Chopro. Oh, <clears throat> thank you, Humaya. And uh, thank you all, uh, all the distinguished guests here. It's very inspiring uh, from, uh, from different countries. Uh, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to say, uh, first of all, I'd like to say th thank you all. And, uh, and before I uh, hand, hand it to Humaira, I, I would like to say a few words. First of all is, uh, uh, is uh, you know, uh, the European thought is actually uh, very indispensable, but actually ined inadequate. Uh, that was said by Dr. Deepesh Chakraborty, who is a very, uh, very prominent uh, professor, uh, Indian professor, and now working in the USA. So he's saying that the, uh, the, the, the very European thought that's a human-centric, uh, human-centric uh, thought, uh, actually, uh, are we really in the center uh, of this art? Uh, so the, the research found that, that, no, we are not in the center. Actually, this thought is actually, is, is very, uh, 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 it's not, uh, it's, it's really not, that is how it, it's not work. It doesn't work. So, so you know, there is a saying that the Gaia hypothesis about the Gaia hypothesis is, is that, uh, uh, that the art, the entire art is a living thing and, uh, and we are all connected. We, if we look at the forest, oh, we'd see the, 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 the trees are, one tree is separate from another tree. But if we look below the earth, or we'll see that how the roots are connected to each other. So in this art, we are all, all the species and the entire planet, is a, if it is a living thing, then we are all connected. And this art itself has a regulatory system, which is called the Gaia hypothesis. The, the regulatory system, I give you very, very short example is, uh, that you know the oxygen uh, level uh, is is maintained in a very delicate balance on Earth, and if it is too high, then it's high. Oxygen is highly reactive. If it is too high, is uh, everything will burn. It's very flammable, and if it is at the low level, then we choke to death. But how this oxygen level is maintained? So, uh, uh, so what they say the scientists say that that uh, the the phytoplankton and other uh, uh, fungi and other plants, they, they const constantly produce oxygen. And also there are other trees that take up oxygen and that is how the regulatory system is, regulatory system is going on. So what, is, what we are experiencing right now is that the, the, the breaking of this regulatory system. So we are breaking this regulatory system and, and how we are doing it is this human-centric civilization and then development-based and uh, um, um, modernity-based or uh, uh, this uh, uh, progress, uh, uh, actually, uh, the, the, this progress is, uh, uh, it is compromising other species, uh, as you all know and notice that. And uh, this, this development model, this economic model, and actually, if I would, if I would say, uh, uh, directly is that this uh, new liberal economic policy, uh, the, uh, the capitalism-based economic policy, where the distribution is highly uh, concentrated in, uh, in, 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 few, uh, in, in every country, the distribution is, is concentrated to the very few percentage of the population. And the first majority of the population is out of the resource. Uh, 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 so, so not to mention that the women and, uh, and other marginal, or the vulnerable group of, of a society are directly affected by this uh, economic model, model. That's what my thought is. Uh, uh, one last thing what I would like to say that, uh, that you know, uh, uh, the when, when the bird, few bird, few species of bird, when they hatch, mother bird, when, when they hatch, the baby bird uh, open, open the mouth and the mother bird put a caterpillar 
in the mouth. So, so, so the, so right away, the baby bird needs the caterpillar. So now what we are experiencing is that if, if the mother bird hatch two weeks earlier or two weeks later, then the caterpillar, the turn into a butterfly. So, so what is happening is the mother bird not going to have any food for the baby bird. So this, so if I compare this little example, uh, uh, then I, 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 and it fit everywhere that how, uh, uh, how we are deprived, we, we would be deprived of, uh, uh, or we are affected by this, uh, the very climate change. They don't, they don't say about climate, they don't talk climate change anymore. They're saying the climate catastrophe. And this catastrophe or the climate emergency uh, 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 are very, Vulnerable and marginalized people, and who are, and and this war driven, war driven, uh, and this uh, this economic model driven uh, society and culture and civilization actually is directly contradictory to uh, this uh, 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 to this uh, uh, this this they are they are they are helping to flourish this uh, this climate change. Uh, uh, and and the climate change, the global warming, and the rapid rising of carbon dioxide and other other toxic gases. So uh, so that's all uh, for me now. But I I I'd like to say thank you all, and uh, it was it was very pleasure, and uh, I, I'm honored to uh, uh, to uh, to join this uh, this program. Uh, now I go back to Humaira. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Moshidul Hakim Shubro, for your amazing speech, uh, to, for sharing your thoughts as well. Uh, Ratri Tripura is here with us. So I would like to request Ratri Tripura again to sing a song. As we have come to the very last stage of our today's event, we would like to finish with a song by Ratri Tripura. Ratri Tripura, I hope you can hear me. I think she is facing some problem. I think she is facing internet problem. Okay, without any further ado, uh, I would like to thank all the participants with us and all the guests with us today. And also I would like to thank our singers, Ratri Tripura and uh, Jonaki Chakma as well for being with us. Uh, now I would like to hand over the floor to my co-host, Kausar Parveen, for concluding this event. Thank you. Thanks, Myra. This concludes our today's event. Have a great day, everyone. And thank you once again for your presentations. We really appreciate your efforts and your expertise. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.